Hey everyone, good evening. Uh, tonight, it is such a joy uh, to be able to share with you guys that Jordan is uh, in transit on the way uh, to the Middle East and we're looking forward uh, to hearing from him as he uh, lands, gets settled, and uh, it has been such a uh, long journey, I know, for him. And so would ask for you guys to pray for him as uh, we're really excited about what the Lord wants to do through his life and uh, through our church uh, there in the Middle East. And of course, be praying for uh, our team that's going to be headed out at the end of the month, uh, going and visiting him and praying ourselves about what the Lord has uh, for us. And so I know Debbie and I are so blessed to be able to uh, take with us these uh, you know, a lot of them young adults, a lot of them are interns, uh, just with a, a passion for the Lord and just uh, an openness to say, Jesus, here we are. Send us. We are willing to go and do where whatever you've called us to do. And if there's anything that uh, I, I received from Sunday was just that stirring within me for us as a body, maybe for some of us that are a little older, settled in our lives here in the United States, just going to church, serving the Lord, and not maybe thinking, Lord, here am I, whatever you have. That doesn't mean God's called you to go. It just means our hearts are surrendered to him and asking him to do his will and to do his work throughout our lives. And it is certainly something that is, is stirring within me. And I know this is the call on our lives as Christians to be surrendered, willing to walk in God's will, it's certainly the best, safest, and greatest place in the world to be in, even though it can be scary at times. And so where can we step out in our faith? Uh, you know, as we see Jordan go, uh, where can we step out uh, like he's stepping out? And all those maybe around us uh, that, are, are, that are in that place of saying, Lord, here am I. Send me. Send me, Lord, into my neighborhood. Send me into the grocery store. Send me into my workplace. Send me into the schools. Send me for your glory. That our lives aren't just normal lives, and then there's the missionary life. But we are all disciples of Jesus Christ. And so I want to just encourage us. And in light of that, I want us to think about uh, what's coming up, and that is Easter and our big outreach here. Of course, that outreach isn't for our people uh, in other places of the world. That outreach is for us right here, uh, the people around us. Let's reach them. And the only way we're going to reach them is to engage them, to pray for them, and to uh, invite them out. So I want to really encourage you guys uh, to, to invite someone out. Of course, pray, but let's act. You can't just pray. Also, just want to give you a quick update. Our team uh, that is uh, down in San Diego and Tijuana, uh, they they kind of we split our teams half were in San Diego half in Tijuana on Monday and uh, on Tuesday uh, they are now all together in uh, in San Diego that's where the greatest need is as they're processing I just received word that there's a lot more refugees they're going to move quicker across the border uh, starting Tuesday Wednesday so by the time you guys listen to this uh, really important uh, for you guys to be praying. And anyone that's willing to go, there is a great need down at Calvary Chapel, San Diego, as they're processing uh, the refugees coming through. Of course, these are the Ukrainian refugees. What a great opportunity God's given us uh, to really touch them, minister to them. And uh, one of the things we were talking about in our staff meeting this morning, and Debbie brought up, is, you know, what if this was your daughter? What if this was your wife? What if these were your kids? that were fleeing America and going to another country because you had to stay back here in war. How would you want the church? How would you want people uh, to, to care for them and take care of them? And you know, if we put the faces of our loved ones on these people, these unknown people to us, it changes things. One of the needs too is opening homes. Uh, we'll have more information as it comes out, but opening homes. And you can call the church and just get signed up to be on a list of uh, you know, opening your home for a couple days uh, for a refugee family, again, mainly women and children uh, coming in uh, and, uh, you know, being able to just host them and love on them. And so I really pray that Calvary Chapel Saving Grace is used greatly in this time and that we make 
the most of every opportunity. That's what the scripture says to redeem the times. The word literally is to buy up every opportunity. God's given us an opportunity to do good to all, especially to those of the household of faith, as Galatians says, and we want to do that. And we want to buy up this opportunity. We want to take advantage of what the Lord has put in front of us. So really be praying for that. And I really want to just urge all of us to do that. I thought Jordan's message was so fitting, just kind of the idea of unity uh, that he's taking from Ephesians chapter 2 and how we are to be unified together and uh, that unity is going to bring our witness to, of Christ. And he used, uh, you know, of course, um, John chapter 17, John chapter 13, Jesus says that the unity we have, the love that we have, for one another is going to cause people to know Christ through us. And so really our prayer uh, is that uh, we would let Christ be magnified and known as we unify together uh, in, 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 you know, um, Jew, Gentile, whatever it might be, whatever, you know, maybe political background we might have or cultural background we might have or certain bent or opinion on this or that that the most important thing is that we all are under Christ and he are, himself is our peace and he's broken down the middle wall of division. I thought Jordan did such a great job explaining what that middle wall of division was for the Gentiles and the court of the Gentile not being able to enter into the temple uh, and worship like the Jews can. And that's just broken down that we all come, we all stand on level plain under at the foot of the cross by grace and that unity and that love we have towards one another will overflow uh, into the world around us. So uh, something I really want to encourage us in. And the last thought I want to leave you guys with is, for many of us, we might not be aware, but uh, the month of Ramadan has started. And that is the Muslim uh, month of fasting. It's when the Muslims fast, and they fast from sun up to sundown. And then they eat at night, and then they fast in the day. And it's interesting, Jordan's going to the Middle East where they're celebrating, of course, Ramadan and all the restaurants will be closed. All the food markets will be closed during the day. So he's just getting dropped in. Uh, you know, I said, well, you're going to do some fasting. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to fast and pray for the Muslims at this time is the most strategic time uh, for them to receive visions and dreams of Jesus and God works this way in Islam but it's at this time they are literally seeking Allah they're seeking their God and asking him to bless their lives and reveal when Jesus shows up at this time it is so strategic in fact at the end of the month uh, there's like a, a day that's really like the high holy day for them and uh, when Jesus shows up on that day uh, you know to them in a dream or a vision it, it means a lot to them. They see it as a sign of God, and therefore it opens doors. There are Muslims amongst us that we want to pray that Jesus would reveal himself to them. Many of you that maybe served at um, the Voice of the Refugees here in Anaheim, all of these uh, Muslims that, that have come, that have had contact now with us as Christians, have been loved by us, have seen our unity, uh, we pray that God would open their hearts. So many opportunities for the gospel right now for us. Love you guys. Have an awesome time as you fellowship uh, together tonight.